Hello, Saints. Hello. Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, faith class that we have on Saturdays. You know, we know that you have to have your faith fed so that you can, your spirit can get stronger. Amen. So you yourself can learn to overcome things in your life. By faith in God. We looked at the breastplate of faith last week. This week we want to look at the work of faith with power. And we picked that up from 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, which there is a title. Uh, Subscript, you know, that the authors put in on each translation. Thanksgiving for faith. And what we want to do here is start in that first verse. Yeah, please, uh, first Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians, Second. the first chapter. We were in uh, First Thessalonians last week. And right. We in what we be? What I'm doing? by the Spirit of God, because he's leading me, because I couldn't do this on my own. Everywhere where faith pops up in the different parts of the Bible, we started all the way in Deuteronomy, yes, we did. where God said that they, are, they had no faith at all. And we came through some of the Old Testament scriptures, and we went to... Um, some of the Psalms is, you know, different other places, but where we're co basically concentrating everything our efforts on is, is the Gospels and uh, epistles because we're a New Testament church, right? The New Testament takes a lot of scripture from the Old Testament as examples. All the things that happened in the Old Testament were examples for us and we can learn from them, Amen. but you have to have faith and love working together. Yes. We find this all the way through there, right? That's right. If you got faith, you should have love. Got to have. And we're not talking about worldly love. Right. Love. Talking about agape love. Right. God's love. Now here in this uh, first chapter of 2 Thessalonians, Paul thought it good to write another letter unto them. He wrote a first epistle to him. Now he's writing a second epistle. It says in the first verse, Paul Silas, Paul Silvanius Silas and Timothy, to the church of the Thessalonians in God, our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, Grace to you and peace, inner calm, and spiritual well-being from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's telling them to, whatever's bothering you, to cool down. <laughs> Be calm. Because a lot of people, they get upset with, when they turn on the news and they see what's going on all over the world, and it seems to trigger them. But don't let that bother you. It says here in the third verse, we ought to always and indeed are morally obligated as those in debt to give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, as it is fitting because your faith is growing even greater and unselfish love of each one of you toward one another is continually increasing. Amen. Therefore, we speak to you with pride among the churches of God for your steadfastness, your unflinching endurance and patience, and your firm faith in the midst of all the persecution and crushing dis distress which you endure. A lot of people are going through this in our world today. They are Persecution. Through all kinds of things. Because it ain't really a matter of uh, different cultures 
persecute none of call service. It's actually a humanitarian thing going on. Mm -hmm. And the devil wants you to think it's because of something else, but no, it's all humanitarian because the God of this world is Satan and what he wants to do is steal, kill, and destroy. And he uses people to do this. And he knows how to trigger them. Yeah. It says, this is a positive proof of your righteousness, judgment of God as a sign of his fair verdict so that you will be considered worthy of his kingdom for which indeed you are suffering. For after all, it is only just for God to repay with distress those who distress you. So God's going to repay this now. So we don't have to worry about trying right. to be vengeance on something. Right. And to give relief to you who are so distressed and to us as well when the Lord Jesus is revealed from heaven with his mighty angels and a flame of fire. And then it says, dealing out full and complete vengeance to those who do not seek to know God and to those who ignore and refuse to obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus by choosing not to respond to him. That's right. These people will pay the penalty and endure the punishment of everlasting destruction, banish from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes to be glorified in his saints on that day, on that day, that is, glorified through the changed lives of those who have accepted him as Savior and have been set apart for his purpose, and to be marveled at among all who have believed, Amen. because our testimony to you was believed and trusted and confirmed in your life. With this in view, That's right. so he's telling you that there's going to be a final judgment, mm -hmm. and God's going to be glorified. And he's looking at it, he's viewing it all. And he says, mm -hmm. with this in view, mm -hmm. we constantly pray for you that our God will count you worthy of your calling to faith. Amen. And with his powerful, power fulfilled, every desire of goodness and complete your every good work of faith. So he's, we want you to complete every good yeah, work of faith. To keep going. And he says, so that the name of our Lord Jesus Christ will be glorified in you by what you do. Mm -hmm. And you and him, according to the precious grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, he says something here in the third verse. He says, because of your faith, it's growing even greater. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the uh, unselfish love of each one of you toward one another is continually increasing. Not decreasing, but increasing. Now he's talking about the saints. That's right. Amen? Because the world don't have faith in God. And they surely they have faith in their self and they have faith in their finances. It kind of tickled me today because, you and know, very selfish. on Saturday morning, they always do these shows about, you know, what to do when you read guitar and who to call and, you know, different things. And, you know, it kind of tickled me because it had nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with It had to do with yourself. me, myself, and I. Right. Now, if you look at the first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, Paul says something over here. Just go back a little bit to the first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, the first verse. Now he says, finally, believers, we ask and admonish you in the Lord Jesus that you follow the instructions that you received from us about how you ought to walk and please God, just as you are actually doing 
and that you exceed itself even more and more pursuing life of purpose and living in a way that expresses gratitude to God for salvation. Right. Then when you jump down to the ninth verse of that chapter, he says, Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need for anyone to write to you. Amen. For you have been personally taught by God to love one another. That is, to have an unselfish concern for others and do and to do things for their benefit. Amen. We should be taught by God. Right. It's, it's we, in us. we shouldn't even have to go over love. But you know what Jesus said in John 13, 34, right? 1334 of the right. book of John, he, said he says, enough. I am giving you a new commandment. That's, right. That's for us saints. Right. That you love command. one another just as I have loved you. That's right. So you too are to love one another. That's right. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. Amen. If you have love, and unselfish concern for one another. That's right. So he's telling us we have heard about people's faith. Paul is telling these people at Thessalonians, these Thessalonians or at Thessalonica, they were in the church. Mm -hmm. He said, church folks. He said he knows that they are, their faith is growing exceedingly, and they already have this love. Right. Amen. Amen. And then in the fourth verse, he speaks about a firm faith in the midst of persecution. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of people lose it when they are persecuted. Amen. They do. Now. If you look at 2 Timothy, the third chapter, we go over these verses over and over again so that just to keep you in, in remembrance. Well, and keep them built up too. You said you know, 2 Timothy, the third. 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Mm -hmm. When we can go on up to the 10th verse, it says, now you have diligently followed my example, that is, my teachings, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, steadfastness, mm -hmm. persecutions, and sufferings such as happened to me at Antioch and Iconium and at Leicester. What persecutions I endured, but the Lord rescued me out of all. Mm -hmm. Indeed, all who delight in pursuing righteousness and are determined to live godly lives in Christ Jesus will be hunted and persecuted because of their faith. Amen. You have to remember that when you're going through persecution. Say, but these are just light afflictions. Right. They're not going to last forever. That's right. He also says here, your firm faith. You gotta have a firm faith, right? That means unmovable. You gotta unmovable. be steadfast, as he has written there already in that one. We have an example. Steadfast. Jesus. Yeah, he is. See, same. we have to keep Jesus first and foremost in our life. Yes, we do. We can't look at what somebody else is telling us to do about something or what happened with their life and how it worked out and all of that. We have to know God for ourselves. We have to hear from God for right. ourselves. And when you hear from God for yourself, you have to be led by the Spirit of God. That's right. To do what He tells you to do. And mm -hmm. then you will have a miracle. You will. That's the way it works. Mm -hmm. But first you gotta hear from God. Right. Now here in the Hebrews the twelfth chapter, this is right after the writer gives us all of examples in the 11th chapter about faith and what faith is and how faith works and all that stuff, right? That's right, that's right. Too. In the 12th chapter, the first verse, he says, Therefore, 
since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses who by faith have testified to the truth That's right. of God's absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and the sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Yeah, it's there. We have a race that run right here. Yeah, and you know the race is not given to the, the swift, the no. fastest. Mm -hmm. It's the one that patiently endures. Don't be steadfast. Right. Just stand, 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 stand with persecution, done. stand right. with all of that. It says, looking away from all that will distract us. That's right. And focusing our eyes on Jesus, That's right. who is the author and the perfecter of faith. Hallelujah. The first incentive for our belief and the one who brings our faith to maturity. That's right. Hmm. Disregarding the shame brings our faith to maturity, who for the joy of accomplishing the goal set before him endured the cross, disregarding the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, revealing his dignity, his authority, and his completion of his work. He went through it. Jesus went through it for us. It says, just consider and meditate on him yes, who endured right. from sinners such bitter hostility against himself. Consider it all in comparison with your trials so that you will not grow weary or and lose heart. And, and you know all of that is so um Right, because it said it was saying that in the second Timothy that verse you read, uh, mm -hmm. the third chapter, the twelve verses in and indeed all who delight in pursuing righteousness and are determined to live godly lives in Christ Jesus, you know, we're gonna be hunted and persecuted because of of their faith. And so we're supposed to be you know, living our life is is you know, in Jesus Christ. So we be following him, we have the same character that he has, and we got to be steadfast. And yes, we're gonna get humiliated sometime, and people gonna be talking us down. But we got to be steadfast and doing what he tell us to do. Yeah, when I was and reading this uh, epistle and meditating on it, because uh, you do get put down, you know, you that spirit that was uh, revealing different things to me about people being persecuted all over the world. They are. Many people are going through persecution mm -hmm. because they don't agree with the government structure. Mm -hmm. So the government persecutes them. Right. And a, a lot of things that we see in the news media has been edited. Right. They don't let you see for your that. viewing. Yeah. To make you think that this is what's really going on. And the reason I, I can say that because when I was in um, the Army, we was in um, Southeast Asia, and what was actually going on over there wasn't what was being portrayed in the news. Mm -hmm. So when we got back, they were persecuting us. Right. For even participating in that war. Right, you did not get no welfare. And all we were doing was following orders of the U.S. government. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was actually the government mm -hmm. who was persecuting these people. Right. And just like now, we have different countries persecuting other people. Right. And this is going to go on until the end of time. It's been going on since the beginning. And it's going to keep on going on. Now he said here, in that fifth verse of first uh, second Thessalonians the first chapter he says something about positive proof 
This is a positive proof of your righteous judgment of God. Positive proof. When you're going through persecution, it's positive proof. Now, 1 Peter, when you look at 1 Peter, the fourth chapter, because we have to keep all this in mind, and, you know, it talks about sharing in the sufferings of Christ. Yes. Christ suffered, you're going to suffer too. Right. He said, if they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. Right. He said, a servant is not greater than his master. Right. Right? Right. And when, you, when you're doing what God tells you to do, it's going to come. Here's what he says in the This is Peter. Like it. Yeah. You know, Peter, um, he went through this persecution. Yes, he did. Right after the Lord was crucified and buried and rose from the dead and he ascended back and these Christians were persecuted by the Roman Empire. Right. That's where they that's who was persecuted, the Thessalonians and all these all these right. different people in these right. epistles were under the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. So no matter what city you live in in the United States, you're still under the, the US mm -hmm. government and these people trying to get into the U.S. from different countries, they're persecuted by the government over in those countries. Country, yeah. Amen? Now here's what it says in um, 1 Peter 4th chapter, the 12th verse. He said, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal which is taking place to test you, that is, to test the quality of your faith. That's right. As though something strange or unusual were happening to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he says, but in so far as you are sharing Christ's suffering, keep on rejoicing. That's right. You're supposed to get, you be, even though you pass, going through some persecution, keep on rejoicing. That's right. So that when his glory filled with his radiant and splendor is revealed, you may rejoice with great joy. Amen. Because Jesus is coming back. Mm -hmm. Amen. It says, if you are insulted and railed for bearing the name of Christ, you are blessed, happy, and life, joy, and comfort in God's salvation regarding, re regardless okay. of your circumstances. Because the spirit of glory and of God is resting on you and indwelling you. In you. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. He who they curse, you glorify. Amen. Make sure that none of you suffer as a murderer. That's right. Or a thief or any sort of criminal. And respond to persecution. So he's telling us when you go through this persecution, you're not supposed to act like them. Right, be murdering. And, and you saw this with them. Jesus, even though he was under the Roman Empire, he was just going around telling people the truth. If actually what happened, God anointed him with the Holy Spirit and with power. Right. And he went around doing good. Doing good, doing good, and staying with the Lord, saying, healing mm -hmm. all who were oppressed of the devil. Mm -hmm. For God was willing. So that's what we're demons. supposed to be doing: yeah. is healing people who are oppressed and persecuted. And He's telling us, don't be, you know, suffering for a murder or a thief or any sort of criminal mm -hmm. and respond to persecution mm -hmm. or as a troublesome meddler interfering in the affairs of others. Right, they don't want us to be a busybody. Out there meddling in everybody's business. So he's telling us we shouldn't be out there uh, protesting mm -hmm. and doing all of that and meddling in the affairs of others. You know, with all these different um, gender issues that we're going through in the United States well, and, said before, they and our culture issues and all of that. We're not supposed to be all involved with that. It's supposed to be about the Lord's business. Right. It says, but if anyone suffers ill-treated Ill as a Christian mm -hmm. because of his belief, he is not to be ashamed. 
but is to glorify God because he is considered worthy of to his suffering and this name. For it is time destined for judgment to begin with the household of God. I see this going on in the media. Mm -hmm. The judgment has begun with the household of God. Yes. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not respect or believe or obey the gospel of God? Mm -hmm. And if it is difficult for the righteous to be saved, <laughs> praise God, what will become of the godless and the sinner? So if judgment is already going on in the house of God, mm -hmm. you think God's going to let the sinner get away with it? No. No. Here in 1 Thessalonians, a lot of people don't like to talk about this. But God already knows what he's going to do. Yes, he does. Because it, it tells us in verse from verse 5. I mean, verse, I mean, I'm Right, First Thessalonians, I mean Second Thessalonians, the first chapter. It tells us from verse 5 through actually 10. Paul talks about how the Lord is coming back. Amen? We in the first chapter. First no, second, second Thessalonians, no. first chapter. Remember I read them verses, right, right, verses right, right, 5 no. through mm -hmm. 10? Right. A lot of people I notice when they're teaching, they don't like to go to the book of Revelation. Yeah, but you but have to tell the truth. I learned this in school that all the answers are always in the back of the book. They are in there. Well, if you're taking the a truth. certain subject, you know, different, um, like, just say, like, uh, when I was taking calculus. And I noticed in that calculus book, at the end of the chapter, they had the answers to all the quizzes that you were supposed to take. Mm -hmm. And if you, your answers didn't line up with the answers they said, then you know something, you were doing something wrong. Calculated something wrong. Right, then you would go back and work through them examples until you got it right. And right. with any kind of math or calculus or algebra, trigonometry, Geometry or anything that has to do with math, algebra. Physics. The more you yeah. do it, yeah. the easier it is for you. Right. The more you go through these examples and you work these examples, when you see these same examples, that you just know what automatically it what to do. Comes to your mind and and this is kind of like how Revelation is. It, the answers are all in the Book of Revelation on what's going to happen in these final days. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's in there. Because we talked Tell about you. that last week. Mm -hmm. Amen, we it's did. In there. We talked about it. You know, about the day of the Lord. That's Amen. Right. That's right. We talked about the day of the Lord. Go over to Revelation, the sixth chapter. Let's go through a few of these verses because in my Bible study reading, I'm going to the book of Revelation and I'm reading these chapters. And um, I'm saying, wow, these, this, this is all the answers to everything. When you get to Revelation, the sixth chapter, <laughs> this book was written by uh, John, the brother James, yeah. Yeah. same author who wrote the gospel according to John. It says here, in the sixth chapter, the first verse, here's how it says, it talks about the seals. <laughs> Amen. That's right. I only to it says, the then I saw the Lamb, Christ, mm -hmm. broke one of the seven seals right. of the scroll, initiating the judgment, and I heard one of the four living creatures call out with a loud voice, thunder, Come. So he wants us to know about that. He does. He wants us to know. When you jump down to verse 9 of this chapter, it gets to the fifth seal. And it talks about the martyrs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, people who have 
been persecuted and killed all in the name of something, right? I don't know. The Lord damn Jesus. Well, we know that Christians were killed in the name of, of Jesus. Right. But they in killed. The they, Jesus. Well, if they killed the Lord Jesus Christ, they ain't got no problem about killing you. No, of course not. Amen. <laughs> yeah, it say, right. says here in the ninth verse of the sixth chapter, it says, When he, the Lamb, broke open the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered yeah. because of the word of God and because of the testimony which they had maintained, maintained out of loyalty to Christ. And that's what we they cried in a loud voice saying, O Lord, holy and true, how long now before you will sit in judgment and avenge our blood on those ungenerated ones. <laughs> unregenerated. Huh? Unregenerated ones who dwell on the earth. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are asking that question. How long is this going to go on before the Lord comes back and put judgment on these people who are persecuting all these Trying people on the earth? The and it says, yeah. then they were each giving white robes mm -hmm. and they were told to rest and wait quietly mm -hmm. for a little while longer mm -hmm. until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers and sisters who were to be killed even as they had been would be complete. Mm -hmm. So he's telling you just hold yes, on. Hold on. You see, you see how the Lord just tells us to, to be, be have faith in God and to be quiet, and you don't have mm -hmm. to be Lord, protesting be out here and saying stuff about what people's doing. Just, mm -hmm. just quiet down, because we know that um, if they killed our Lord Jesus Christ, they don't have no problem about killing anybody else. Right. And we have, in my lifetime, I have seen many people being martyred, assassinated. Right. All the way up to the president. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Amen. It also tells us in the seventh chapter, it tells us a few things too. Mm -hmm. It says in the 13th verse of the seventh chapter, it says, Then one of the elders responds, saying to me, Those who are dressed in long white robes, who are they, and from where did they come? <laughs> they dressed in white, long robe. That lets you know when you answer from the body's presence with the Lord, he's got a robe up there waiting on you, a long white robe. Amen? Yeah, to cover your neck. They're real white, too. Right. Yeah, and, it, white. and it says, I said to him, my Lord, you know the answer. And he said to me, these are the people who came out of great tribulation, persecution, and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb because of his atoning sacrifices. For this reason, they are standing before the throne of God and they serve him in worship day and night in the, his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tabernacle over them and shelter and protect them with his presence. They will hunger no longer, nor thirst anymore, nor will the sun beat down on them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb who is in the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away God will wipe every tear from their eyes giving them eternal comfort Hallelujah. children whatever happens to you on this earth is just for a small yes, small portion of time a small portion of the time you have to go through this. Mm -hmm. Amen? Some of us have to go through it more than others. Mm -hmm. Now go to, with me to the 20th chapter. Let's, let's get to, because all the answers is in this the back of the book. Right. It really is. In the 20th chapter, 
of Revelation, the 10th verse, it says, And the devil who had deceived them was hurled into yes, the was. lake of fire and burning brimstone, sulfur, where the beast, Antichrist, mm -hmm. and the false prophets are also, mm -hmm. and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So that's letting you know that the devil has already been de defeated. That's right. When the Lord comes back, he don't have a problem with, you know, the devil no. being ruling the earth. Mm -hmm. Say, you don't have a problem with Satan. Then it tells you in verse 14 of this chapter, because this talks about Satan bound, the millennium reign, the final rebellion, and the final judgment. Right. Then when you get over here to uh, Revelation 20, 14, it says, Then death and Hades, the realm of the dead, were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. That's right. The lake of fire, the eternal separation from God. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was hurled into the lake of fire. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about these folks. You don't. Then when you go to the 21st chapter, it talks about a new heaven and a new earth. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I, can't, I told you last week that this heaven and earth that we now know is going to be burnt. Hey, that's going to oh, be burnt with mm -hmm. fire. That's true. It says here in the 21st chapter of Revelation, the 8th verse, it says, but as for the cowards mm -hmm. and unbelieving and abominations who are devoid of character and personal integrity and practice or torment immorality, mm -mm, tolerate. Mm -hmm. tolerate immorality, that's like tolerating mm -hmm. it's letting it go this down. gender stuff. Mm -hmm. And murderers and sorcerers with intoxicating drugs, mm -hmm. they have legalized marijuana. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and idolatrous and occult who practice and teach false religion. Mm -hmm. Even the Pope gave a blessing to same-sex marriage. Yeah, he on a bad list too. Because and all the liars who normally deceive and twisted truth. So there are some liars in the body of Christ. Right. That are twisting and you know the truth. That's why they're allowing that to go on. Their part will be in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone, mm -hmm. which is the second death. No way to help. No All you have to do is just read the book of Revelation. And, uh, you know, I've been reading it since January. Just, you know, because that's why I started reading it in January. Because what I do, I read a chapter every day, five days a week. And I've been meditating on this. Mm -hmm. I've been saying, I have to. a lot of stuff I don't even have to be even worried about. We don't. Don't have to have no fear with it. But I'll tell you one thing, Pastor. People need to self -exam do an examination on themselves when they're reading this to see uh, are they really living for Christ or trying to live for themselves. Well, go with to 1 Thessalonians, the second chapter. You know, who do you belong to? In 1 Thessalonians, we went over, I think, some of this. Mm -hmm. The second chapter, the 13th verse. It says, And we also thank God continuously for this, that when you received the word of God concerning salvation, which you heard from us, you welcome it not as the word of mere men, That's right. but as it truly is the word of God, which is effectively work at work in you who believe exercising inherent supernatural power and those who of faith. So why is it important to have faith? It is important. Then when you get down here, 
2 Thessalonians, it's a lot in this 11th verse of 2 Thessalonians, the first chapter, 11th verse. It talks about prayer, it talks about a calling, it talks about God, it talks about the works of God, and all of that. It says, with this in view, right. what we just talked about, with right. all that, what we right. talked about in the book of Revelation, yeah, all, right. everything that we have said up until this point, mm -hmm. it says, with this in view, we constantly pray for you. <laughs> pray for you. That's right. We pray for you that our God will count you worthy of your calling to faith. That's right. And with his power, fulfill every desire for goodness. Mm -hmm. God wants you to have goodness in your That's life. That's what he does. And complete your every work of faith. Amen. When we look at first, uh, in, you go to the book of Ephesians. Because it talks all about this in the epistles. Yes, it does. And when you look at Ephesians, the third chapter, Paul writes something here in the third chapter. Because we are Gentiles, right? Amen. Yes. Mm -hmm. It says, for the third chapter of Ephesians, the 14th verse, it says, For this reason, grafting, grasping, grasping the greatness of his plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in Christ, he says, I bow my knees in reverence before the Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ, <laughs> from whom every family in heaven and earth derives his name, God, the first and ultimate Father, may he grant you out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with power through his spirit in the inner self and dwelling your innermost being and personality. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through your faith. That's right. And may you, having been deeply rooted and securely grounded in love, be fully capable of comprehending with all the saints, God's people, the width, the length, the height, the depth of his love, fully experiencing his amazing endless love, and that you may come to know practically through his personal experience the love of Christ, which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be lifted up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may have the rich experience of God's presence in your life completely filled and flooded with God himself. Paul prayed. We need to pray for the saints. Yeah, we do. We need to keep them in prayer so they don't waver and be steadfast. Unmovable. And he's saying that we should be worthy of our calling in faith. Yes. When you look at 2 Thessalonians here, the second, you go to the second chapter, we're going to jump ahead here a little bit. In the second chapter of Second Thessalonians, when you look at uh, 13th verse, it says, But we should and are morally obligated as debtors always to give thanks to God for you, believer, believers beloved by the Lord, because God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through the sanctifying work of the Spirit that sets you apart for God's purpose and by your faith in the truth Amen. of God's Word that leads you to spiritual maturity. It was for this end that He called you through our gospel, the good news of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, 
so that you may attain and share in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He's already telling us that he's going to wipe away our tears, right? Yes, he is. Yes, he he's going to take care of us. You know, when I read that, what comes to my mind is he's going to have to wipe away our tears mm -hmm. because a lot of people that we think are saved, they're not. They're not. That's why he has us going over his word all they the time. They are actors. They are counterfeit yeah. Christians. Mm -hmm. they, they're some of the main ones that be setting us up to suffer. <laughs> because they appear to be with us. Go with me to the Psalms, they, right? they're not with us. Let's, let's say it's God. God's going to be with us. They be the ones pointing you out. Um, it said God will count you worthy yeah. of this calling. God will. When you look it's at the Psalms, it's that. full of this, but I just want to look at a few of them. Psalm 48. Yeah, you think that person be rich. And God's going to have to wipe away our tears. Yeah. Because a lot of us ain't going to be able to quit crying because we think mama and daddy's safe. Mm -hmm. And grandma and grandma will say, let me stop. Yes. Help me, help me, help me. Here's what it says in Psalm 48. As we wind this up, Psalm 48, verse 14 says, For it is God, our God forever and ever. He will guide even until death. Be our God, yeah. He will be our God, mm -hmm. even unto death. That's why he's a good shepherd. We're supposed to and when you look at Psalm 68, follow the Lord. We're going to wind this up in just a few minutes here, saints. Psalm 68, verse uh, 19. It says, Blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens day by day. Amen. The God who is our salvation. Yes. The God. God is to us a God of acts of salvation, mm -hmm. and to God the Lord belongs escape from death. <laughs> Praise God, Amen. setting us free. That's because right. you know if you're a child of God, you should you ain't gonna never die. That's right. Even though this outward body may be perishing, you're not gonna die Spirit. because it, it tells us in Revelation that He's got a white robe for us waiting on nice us. To put us in. Amen. Let's send this in uh, Titus, the third chapter. I'm like, almost like Paul, because he said in um, 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, he said, finally. But you know, when Paul says finally, there's always more to say, right? Just be getting warmed up to keep going. And Titus, the third chapter, here's what it says in the fourth verse. He says, but when the goodness and kindness of God our Savior and his love for mankind appears in human form as the man, Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we have done, but because <coughs> of his own compassion That's and right. mercy, mercy by the cleansing of the new birth, spiritual transformation, regeneration, and renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out richly upon us through Christ, through Jesus Christ our Lord, mm -hmm. so that we would be justified, made free of guilt, of sin, by his compassion, undeserved grace, and that we would be acknowledged as acceptable to him and made heirs of eternal life, actually experiencing it according to our hope is guaranteed. Amen. We're going to leave you right there. Praise God for his holy word.